like the most intellectually interesting episode I've had in a long time. And just the most heartwarming, like, you can't even write that kind of a story. My gosh, I love this one so much. Hey y'all, welcome back to everybody's favorite time of the month. Much better than that other time of the month. Yes, I'm aware this joke is getting old and I'm going to keep using it. Where we wear our own merch and go through an episode of TLC's famously entertaining show, I Didn't Know I Was Pregnant, while commenting on educational points that we can learn from. Y'all, this episode is going to blow your mind. It is one of the most medically interesting episodes that I have done to date. This video is also sponsored by KiwiCo. Two-year-old Marisa is a recent college grad who has her hands full. When Sean and I met, we both knew that there was something there. Those feelings never went away and they're still there. Marisa is passionate about everything. I know he meant that in the nicest of ways, but I feel like that's how my husband would describe me. She is passionate about everything. Like, even things maybe she shouldn't be passionate about. She's passionate about them. A couple who have been dating for almost four years enjoy spending time with Sean's brother Mark and his wife Trisha. We saw each other at least every weekend, so it was pretty often. But in June of 2009, the focus is all on Trisha. Oh, no, no thanks. Mark and I are pregnant. pregnant. <gasps> Everyone was really excited. <laughs> But I started thinking, I won't be able to have a family. Marisa may not be able to have a family because she has never gotten her period. The doctors never gave me a reason why. They did a lot of blood work, but there was nothing irregular. Wow, that's really fascinating. So she has what we call primary amenorrhea. This is where you've never had a period. So this is different from secondary amenorrhea, which is where you were having periods and then at some point they stop. Primary amenorrhea can be caused by a whole variety of things, but that is definitely something that should be looked into and a diagnosis should be given. Like you don't just go, oh yeah, you've never had a period and that's it. I, I would be interested to know if there's more to that story because it's unusual to not have a reason that that happened. So things I would be thinking about in that situation would be, structural anomalies, meaning maybe she never had a genital tract or uterus that developed. These would be things like Mullerian anomalies or problems with the development of the genital and reproductive tract like MRKH or meyer rokitansky kusterhauser syndrome. I butchered that name and that's why we call it MRKH or just vaginal agenesis. And these people basically have only the first third of the vagina, and then it's just a blind pouch, and they don't have a uterus that ever developed. They still have normal ovaries, and so functioning cycles, they just don't bleed monthly and have a period because they don't have a uterus. There are other structural anomalies which would keep people from having a period as well. And those are typically things we could find on physical exam. Then there are genetic things which would prevent someone from having a cycle ever. Things like Turner syndrome. Basically these people are born with one X chromosome and no second X chromosome and no Y chromosome. And they have other problems that can go along with that as well, including heart conditions. And so that's a very important thing to diagnose as well, because it's not just, oh, you don't have a period, no big deal. I'm really shocked that she was never given any further workup or sent to a reproductive endocrinologist to look into more of what was going on. But of course, you never know for sure what the full story is because they edit these in a way to not always be real helpful to figuring out the full story. In July of 2009, Trisha is four months pregnant. Marisa commiserates with Trisha and tries to make sweets that will cheer her up. I was eating more. I was gaining weight. I had probably gained 10 to 15 pounds. My feet were swollen. I thought maybe it was due to working a lot. As I say in all of these, I can still see 100% why she didn't know she was pregnant. She's never had a period. So in her whole life, she's in her 20s, she's never had a period. And she has had a doctor tell her, because you've never had a period, you can never get pregnant. Now that really depends on the reason why she's never had a period and what exactly is going on here. But I definitely know why at this point, she still wasn't clued into the fact that she was pregnant. True or false, by the end of the second trimester, a female fetus already has a lifetime supply of eggs. Your answer when we return. 
Sorry to interrupt, but I want to tell you about the wonderful sponsor of today's video. If there is a child in your life that you want or need to get a gift for this holiday season, KiwiCo is the answer. KiwiCo is a subscription box service that sends a monthly crate of creative projects right to your doorstep. These are perfect for teaching innovation and creativity, for encouraging kids to use their brains and imaginations, and so wonderful for our kids who are spending more time at home and for my kids who are doing all of their learning at home. Each crate comes with all the supplies that you need for the project that month, so there's no running to the store to get extra supplies, and they're customizable to the age of your child. Not only are they a great resource for our kids to learn at home, but they're providing a lot of really fun family time for us as well. It's really cool to just watch them learn and grow and innovate, and I absolutely love this company. If you'd like to try out KiwiCo and support my channel in the process, they are giving y'all 50% off your first month's crate if you use my link in the description or go to kiwico.com slash mdj. Now let's get back to the video. Your answer, true. By the 23rd week, a female fetus has a uterus, ovaries, and eggs. And actually, to add to that, they have more eggs than they will have at any point in their entire life because apoptosis, the process of those eggs going away, starts in utero and continues until menopause. The night before Trisha's due date, Marisa stays up late waiting for news when she suddenly experiences a pain she's never felt before. <sighs> I started to feel a little sharp pain in my back. It would last for maybe about a minute and then it would go away. Are they going to have their babies on the same day? Oh my gosh, this is crazy. About 1.30 in the morning, they called and said Trisha's in labor. So I tell them I will see them in the morning. They are! They're gonna have them on the same day. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. The next morning, Sean finds out that Mark and Trisha had a healthy baby boy but he and Marisa aren't able to make it to the hospital because of Marisa's intense back pain. Something tells me they're gonna make it to the hospital. Marisa finally gets out of bed and tries to get her day started, but the pain is too strong for her to even stand up straight. What's going on? While well, she's bent over the table and just screaming, I knew it was time to go to the hospital. I can't get over the actor just coming in there while she's hurting and screaming, what's going on? What's going on? Can you imagine if you were unknown laboring and your significant other just ran in and screamed at you, what's going on? Desperate to ease Marisa's pain, Sean rushes her to the closest hospital, 15 minutes away. Doctors first order an ultrasound to figure out the source of the pain. And she does the ultrasound and she was just like, <gasps> Doctor? What is it? And she says, oh, you're pregnant. I feel like it's the same in every episode. They get the ultrasound before they get any of the other blood work back and the poor ultrasound tech is like, I'm just here to do my job. Oh, mm, I think that you're going to get a new job soon of being a parent. I didn't believe her. I was thinking there's no way I could be pregnant. Oh. She can't get pregnant. How Her actual significant other is just so lovely and kind and calm. And meanwhile, the actor playing him in the show is like, she's not pregnant. She can't get pregnant. How I don't know why. This is so funny to me today. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. It was mind blowing to me. She doesn't get her period. And then she called the doctor in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just check you. Hold on, let's see. Oh my God. Why is a doctor yelling, oh my gosh, you're in labor. If a doctor yells like that at you, I'm really sorry. Nobody should act like that. Oh my God. We should have the best poker face on the planet. And if I am scared or surprised or in shock, you should never know that. I know he's just an actor, but it's not good doctoring. The doctor says there's a baby in the birth canal. You're in labor and you're gonna have a baby. <laughs> I was just in so much shock. It's like I'm in a daze or dream <laughs> that everything they're telling me really isn't real. Yeah, we say this in every episode, right? It must be extremely difficult to go from, wow, everything is fine, to, oh my gosh, I'm in so much pain, to, no, I can't be pregnant, I've never had a period in my whole life, to actually you are pregnant and you're having the baby right now. No matter how many of these episodes I watch, I cannot get past 
how somebody processes all of that so quickly. And I mean, the answer to that is that you don't, you don't process it that quickly. I was thinking like, how would a baby survive? What if it's not healthy? The first thing that went in my head, it was, is this baby gonna be okay? We went straight to the delivery room. Doctors give Marisa an epidural as they prepare her for delivery. A couple hours into being in the delivery room, I started feeling pressure. I wanna know what conversations happened in those couple of hours, because it sounds like she was like in full blown labor when she got there, but not quite ready to like have a baby, which is unique to these stories because a lot of times they come in and they're like having a baby right then. I would love to be a fly on the wall for her talking with her significant other in that time frame of like, what just happened? Are we dreaming? This is crazy. Like, I just, I can't imagine the thought process and like how you start to go through the motions of, of, you know, accepting that in that time period. Even when I was pushing, I wasn't thinking that there was gonna be a baby. I still wasn't processing it. Once the baby came out, the doctor said, oh, it's a little boy. The doctor gave me the gold clippers. I clipped his umbilical cord and I'm just, in awe that I have a child now. I love her significant other. He seems like the most down to earth, like just genuinely kind and supportive person that I have seen on uh, ever. I mean, just the way that he described that was so beautiful. I, I love that. He gave him the gold clippers. I didn't know I was pregnant. I was drinking. I wasn't taking vitamins. I didn't have any prenatal care. After several stressful minutes, a nurse comes back with news on the baby's condition. <laughs> they said he's healthy, he's at a healthy weight. I had all this joy and relief that, you know, he's breathing, he's okay. And I want to continue to reiterate that a lot of these people probably have a lot of healing and learning and just self forgiveness to do in the time following these, which is really why I like doing this series because I want to just bring awareness to the fact that you do the best you can with the information you have and we're not perfect. And when things are just happening to line up in a way that makes something in your life go in a way that you wouldn't have chosen it to go if you had had full control over it, it's okay to give yourself permission to understand that the things that you did and thought and and the way that you were living your life at that point was based on, on what you knew at that point. And that's, that's the best that you can do. And it's okay. And it's okay to be okay with that, no matter if it's an undiagnosed pregnancy or something completely unrelated. Like that is my life philosophy in general. And I hope that that's something you take away from this channel. Wow, that got from here's some medical info and a laugh to a heartfelt heart to heart real fast. The baby weighed six pounds, 14 ounces, and he was 19 inches long. I was 38 weeks. It's so tiny. Marisa is taken to recovery, where she holds her baby for the first time. That was really surreal. I looked at him and I told him I loved him. That was the best moment. My heart, I can't take this. It is too much. That is so darn sweet. I love this. I still need to know if he was born on the same day as his cousin. Sean now has some surprising news to share with his brother Mark and his wife Trisha, who had their baby earlier in the day. It is the same day. I'm so happy it's the same day. I had a baby. I literally shot up out of bed and I was <laughs> Are you kidding me? I still am not sure, you know, what the situation was with her never having had a period. We can theorize a couple of things at this point. She probably does not have Turner syndrome, although there are cases of people who have Turner syndrome who do actually ovulate or have periods if they have what we call mosaic Turner syndrome. She doesn't seem to fit the profile and obviously you can't just look at someone and decide that, but just based on her story, her getting pregnant, her having no complications, and a few other things from typical features of people who have Turner syndrome, I would guess that it's probably not that, but we can't know that for sure. 
I definitely know she doesn't have MRKH, which is the Mullerian anomaly I was talking about where you never develop a uterus because obviously if she had that, she wouldn't be able to get pregnant and have a baby at all. Also some things that we talk about a little bit within the OB community is people who have early onset PCOS who essentially have PCOS that starts before puberty even starts or right at the start of puberty and they never have a normal cycle because of that. Now, that being said, it would be extremely unusual for the one time she ovulates because if she's never had a period, that means she's never ovulated until she got pregnant. But then the one time she ovulated, she ended up getting pregnant and having a baby. I mean, that is insane odds. And no matter actually what the cause of her never having had a period before was, it is extremely crazy to me that the one time in her 20s that she ovulated, she ended up getting pregnant. Those odds have to be extremely low. This is just really fascinating to me because we don't know the exact etiology, but even without knowing the etiology, it's super interesting how this could happen. And I definitely understand why if you've never had a cycle in your whole life, you would not jump to pregnancy as something that could be going on. Marisa and Trisha still can't believe that they gave birth to sons on the same day. When I tell people the story of Dominic, they don't believe, but then I show the pictures of Dominic and his cousin together, and they're very surprised. Dominic is now 14 months. He is healthy. It feels really good to be a mom. It's everything I always wanted. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Y'all, I can't, this is so much. This is like the most intellectually interesting episode I've had in a long time. And just the most heartwarming, like you can't even write that kind of a story. My gosh, I love this one so much. I'm just gonna go on and on. Y'all just feel free to, you know, roast me in the comments, but I just love a good happy ending and being born on the same day as your cousin when his mom didn't even know that she could get pregnant, much less that she was pregnant at the exact same time. I just, I'm melting. I love it. Be kind to yourself, to each other, to me. In the comments, be kind, and I will see you next time. And if you want a don't get to be offended by science shirt, you can get that on Teespring at the link below. Also, we still have science is inclusive RU shirts as well. Bye.